back at it again. We've got one here with Tucker. Shout out to Tucker Carlson. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, he's talking about this recent situation that is going down. And obviously, uh, well, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll save the rest of that for later on in the video. Like, share, comment. Please hit that like button. Really helps out the YouTube algorithm. Share these videos. All right. It's the arrow button down below. Copy the link. Paste it anywhere you like. You can text it to a friend. Text it via or send it via Instagram, DM, Facebook, Messenger. All right. Share these videos. Greatly appreciate everyone that already does. Thank you guys so, so much. You uh, tremendously help out with the growth of this channel. Anyway, let's dive in. Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson Good tonight. Evening. East Palestine, Ohio sits directly on the border of Pennsylvania. It's just feet away. So anything significant that happens there in East Palestine, say a toxic mushroom cloud rising thousands of feet over the town, is certain to affect the state next door. And that's why three days after a train derailed there, spilling a great volume of dangerous chemicals onto the ground and into the water, Josh Shapiro, the governor of Pennsylvania, held a press conference about it. Shapiro announced that authorities had decided to set those chemicals on fire. And that was a very good thing. No one should be unduly alarmed. The burning of these chemicals, Shapiro said, had gone, quote, as planned. Officials on the scene, meanwhile, declared the burn, quote, perfect. Mike DeWine, the governor of Ohio, agreed with all of this. The people in charge, the railroad's engineers, and the state officials overseeing them had everything under control. So two days later, evacuation orders for residents were... Wait, before, before he goes too deep, I just don't understand why they chose to burn it. Knowing that... Well, allegedly that, you know, it was going to release some toxic stuff into the air. I thought we were all about the environment. So, like, if you allegedly knew that there was a risk of toxic things being released into the air, why was the first idea to just burn? Why not have some pumps suck the, the, the liquid or whatever plastic goo? I don't, I don't know exactly what it was. Chemicals you know, off of the ground. Now, obviously, you'll still have some left over that kind of seeped into the dirt. And if you had to burn anything, all right, burn the, the residue, you know, the, 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 the stuff that you couldn't suck out with a pump, you know, because I'm sure there was, you know, big puddles with, you know, this 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 liquid, this, this chemical, because these are giant tankers. So you could have pumped that into other tankers, right? Into, you know, uh, some kind of other tanks of some sort burn the little bit that you couldn't pump out instead of just saying you know what we're just about to burn just all of this like wait what maybe there's some logical reason behind it uh if anybody knows uh please let me know um yeah i i, I just don't understand that one officially lifted both in east palestine and over the border in pennsylvania that was last week in the subsequent days, a lot of people have wondered out loud, was it really a wise decision to light thousands of gallons of vinyl chloride on fire, releasing a World War I-era bioweapon into the air over a populated area? Was that a good call? And was it really safe two days later for people to go back to their homes? And if it was safe, how do we know that? Is anyone in charge actually monitoring with any accuracy the level of deadly chemicals in the air, ground, and water in and around East Palestine? Well, no, apparently nobody is. And that's highly upsetting when you think about it. Talk about a failure at all levels. The first duty of government is to protect its citizens. So it's bad. It's crazy. And it's very bad news for reckless politicians like Josh Shapiro and Mike DeWine, who may have helped make this disaster much worse. So tonight, both DeWine and Shapiro are desperately trying to revise their previous statements about the so-called controlled burn. Both have now decided that the toxic mushroom cloud over East Palestine, the one they signed off on and endorsed on television, was actually a bad thing. It didn't go as planned. It wasn't perfect. And both governors have now identified the villain here, not as themselves, no, of course not, but as the railroad, Norfolk Southern. Both are considering lawsuits against the company. In an act of amazingly brazen butt covering, Josh Shapiro even wrote a letter to the White House and the Transportation Department claiming that Norfolk Southern was, quote, unwilling to explore or articulate alternative courses of action to their proposed vent and burn. It was very obvious, he says, that there was probably a, quote, safer all overall approach for first responders, residents, 
and the environment. Well, you that don't was suppose. Very obvious. <laughs> he just never said anything about it. It's remarkable. And for the what record, we are not defending Norfolk Southern here. We're only pointing out that Norfolk Southern had the strong endorsement of Josh Shapiro and Mike DeWine when it set those chemicals on fire and caused the mushroom cloud. And by the way, the Biden administration endorsed it too. According to Pete Buttigieg, Biden officials were on the scene. Yet somehow they never said a word about the mushroom cloud until pictures of it evoked outrage on social media. And of course they didn't. Mm -hmm. They didn't even notice. It had nothing to do with equity or climate change. East Palestine mm -hmm. is a poor white town that voted for Trump's. They couldn't, they couldn't attach it to uh, white supremacy and racism. So nothing to see here. <laughs> we checked out the video of Pete just the other day. Uh, was that? Maybe that was yesterday. Uh, talking about, you know, construction workers being too white. <laughs> Did, didn't mention a single thing about the East Palestine, East Palestine situation. Didn't say a single thing about it. But wanted to talk about there's too many white construction workers. <laughs> Goodness gracious. These, these guys are absolute fools, man. So honestly, who cares? No one in the Biden administration did care. And that's an atrocity. The people whose indifference made it possible should lose their jobs, beginning with Pete Buttigieg and extending to governors Josh Shapiro and Mike DeWine. They didn't care, and they got caught not caring. Mm -hmm. Even tonight, Mike DeWine clearly still doesn't care. Here he is insisting everything's fine. So if it were your family governor, you'd be okay sending everybody back home? Yeah, look, I mean, we, we indicated that. Uh, we're, we're gonna continue to test the air. We're gonna continue to test the water. Uh, but what that is indicating is that it is, is very, very safe. Very, yes, very we indicated that kind of a clinical response and a dishonest one, because, of course, Mike DeWine is not living in East Palestine, and there's no chance of that ever. Animals in East Palestine are dying by the thousands, and you don't need to be a chemist to know that's not a good thing. The town has uh -huh. been poisoned. Residents worry about what's still in the air, soil, and water of their rural community. Don't tell me it's safe. Something's going on if the fish are floating in the creek. Ohio officials confirming some 3,500 fish died in local waters in the days after the derailment, but insist extensive testing shows there's no threat to other wildlife or humans. They say there's only anecdotal evidence of residents getting sick and no confirmed connection to the hazardous chemicals aboard the train. Well, of Goodness gracious, you know, and and I don't think there ever will be a connection. Now, this is just my opinion. I don't know this with 100 percent certainty. But if it ever was connected. A couple of folks got a big lawsuit coming. And they know that. They know it. They got a lot of money that they're going to have to shell over. Not just Norfolk whatever the company is but there's some more people too and they all know it so i don't think there ever will be a true connection between people getting sick and this whole situation going down they'll say it was something else oh you know you know well ah, it was just uh, something just happened we don't know <laughs> you know <laughs> Your sickness just popped up out of thin air. We, 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 don't, we don't know what happened to you. <laughs> Guarantee it. Guarantee it. Like, you, you can't tell me fish, like she said, floating in the creek, dead, isn't a sign that something's happening. I even came across a clip of a video. I wish I could find it now, but there's no way that I'm going to find it. Uh, there was a guy who was raising foxes. Yeah, I know. Kind of strange. Uh, I didn't ask any questions. Maybe, 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 maybe that's a, a, a huge thing. I, I don't know. I've, I've never talked to anybody that raised foxes. Do you think? I'm not mad at you. I just personally had never heard of it until I saw this clip. Raising foxes? What in the world? Okay. Um, but his foxes were having some type of reaction to it. Like they, they their faces were getting real puffy and uh, irritated. So there was something going on with that. But of course... Everything's fine, guys. Everything is fine. Now, obviously, yes, we don't know with 100% certainty that, you know, it, it's because of that situation that the foxes, you know, had the, the swollen faces or even the fish die. Technically, 
Can't say that with 100% certainty. That is a fact. I can't say that. But I can make an educate I can make an educated guess that they're linked. I can guess. And I can listen to the people uh that that live in the area area that were interviewed that were talking about how their eyes are burning and you know uh they're they're, they're having um uh sneezing fits and some of these other uh, headaches I believe one of the ladies was talking about before you know and all types of things I've come across those videos I can believe them I mean I don't think they're all lying maybe they are lying but you know that in combination with with the fish dying and the fox's face is swollen I don't know if it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck y'all know the saying it's probably a duck I'm just saying but that's just my opinion on it Y'all let me know yours in the comment section. Oh, there's only anecdotal evidence. Also called observed reality. Maybe Tony Fauci will show up soon to lecture us about the science. Amanda <laughs> Shears will probably not listen. She lives there 10 miles from East Palestine in Lima, Ohio. She says that even at Lima, rather, at that distance, burning chemicals smell like chlorine and hurt her eyes. And she also mm. says her chickens, and this is not a good sign no matter what they say, are dying without ex explanation oh so i walked up to the cage and this this is what i found amanda brashears was going to feed her five hens and rooster this morning when she discovered them all oh. lifeless practically in the same position with no signs of a predator entering their enclosure i'm oh. beyond upset and quite panicked because this that's food they may be just chickens but they're family Brashear says her chickens were alive and well yesterday. She believes the smell following the detonation of the train carrying chemicals that derailed in East Palestine is to blame for her bird's sudden death. My video camera footage shows my chickens were perfectly fine before they started this burn. And as soon as they started the burn, my chickens slowed down and they died. If you can do this to chickens in one night, imagine what it's going to do to us in 20 years. Mm. Mm. So not only were they, you know, obviously like family pets to them, but I'm sure that was a food source. Chickens produce eggs. I'm sure they weren't eating the chickens for the chicken itself, you know, the actual chicken. But, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sure they were getting food from that. All gone. And this isn't speculation. This isn't, you know, somebody just saying something like, we actually saw the video of the darn things. So they can't just say, oh, well, no, that was made up. Like, we, 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 we just watched the video. Now, of course, I think there's going to become a point in time where, uh, you know, they're, they're going to tell us the grass is purple when really it's green. But they're going to be like, don't believe your eyes. Trust us. Trust us. That's fake news. That's misinformation and disinformation. That grass over there that you've seen your entire life that you're looking at right now, it is not green. It is purple. And there's going to be half, okay, maybe not half, an alarming portion of this country that is going to just believe it. Oh, I've thought it was green this whole time. And I'm, I'm sorry, we're going to start running into situations. I, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, mark my words. Mark my words. Even though we watch these clips like that, oh, no, that was misinformation. Like, I, I watched the video. No, it was fake. It was... Uh, don't believe it. It, it. it was AI created. <laughs> That's the excuse they'll, they'll use. It, it's coming, guys. It's coming. So as always, if you want to know what people really think, ignore what they say. Words are cheap and people lie. Watch what they do. Mike DeWine may say it's safe to be in Oh, say that again. So as always, if you want to know what people really think, ignore what they say. Words are cheap and people lie. Wa Words are cheap and people lie. Watch what they do. Watch what they do. Facts. Mike DeWine may say it's safe to be in East Palestine, but you'll notice he's not spending the night there. One woman who does live there noticed that federal officials, while assuring everybody everything was fine, were wearing hazmat suits. When you watch people that are investigating, they all have these giant hazmat suits on, um, but somehow it's safe for people to go back to these homes. Um, they only evacuated a mile, a mile out-ish. Um, anybody outside of that, you're kind of on your own. If you want to leave, you can leave. If you want to drink bottled water, go for it, buy it if you want to, you know, but it's all on our own dime. And this is caused by 
you know, a company who makes billions of dollars and, and we're forgotten about. Mm. So the people who live there obviously want some answers. It's totally safe, says the guy in the hazmat suit. <laughs> so residents of East Palestine Center gathered for a town hall. The mayor has just told residents that he has not heard from anyone in the White House, didn't until yesterday when oh. it started to become a political liability for them. The mayor also said he has no idea where Pete Buttigieg is tonight. Subscribe to the Fox. <laughs> I want to say something so rude about Pete. Oh, my gosh. I just thought of the craziest <sighs> statement. But I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to. I'm not going to. I'll be the better person today. Now, tomorrow, I make no promises. But today, I'll be the bigger person. I'm angry for these folks. I really am. What they're doing to these people is absolutely disgusting. The slap in the face. Right. It was already a slap in the face. I mean, watching all of the things, the foxes, the fish, the chickens, all of it, hearing the testimonies from the people, how, how, how they feel, the headaches that they're getting, all types of stuff. It, 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 that, that was already a, a slap in the face enough. But then you have the, 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 the cojones to go to this place in a hazmat suit and then turn around and tell the same people that live in this. Oh, no, everything's fine. But we're going in there with hazmat suits on. But it's fine though. So why do you have a hazmat suit on? We had another train derailment in Detroit where allegedly there were some more chemicals. Um, I think I heard there was a plastic facility that caught on fire. Five acres, I believe it was. Now correct me if I'm wrong. I could I could be I could be wrong on some of this information. So don't 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 completely hold me to it, all right? Uh, but I believe, could be wrong, but I believe there was a plastic facility that caught on fire uh, yesterday. Um, train derailment in Detroit as well. That, that um, I, I believe they said what, there, there was another uh, um, tanker with some chemicals on that as well. Now we can get into conspiracy theories and speculation. But honestly, I, I you know, I, 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 I need to marinate on it a little bit, you know. Um, seeing what I'm seeing, obviously I have initial thoughts of, you know, what are they doing? Are they trying to make us panic? You know, we got objects flying over our heads that they're shooting down. Now we got these tankers, you know crashing spilling over and burning we got the alleged plastic facility that's on fire we've had food distribution centers catching on fire like what is happening are we being poisoned intentionally is this a situation where they're trying to create some acid rain and tell everyone they have to stay in the house now this is this is just conspiracy theory stuff now this ain't okay this this none of this is facts okay none of it all right. This is just me thinking through what could possibly be going on. Um, you know, is this a distraction from the uh, uh, Epstein client list being released? Um, is this just to test us to see how we'll react, what we'll do? Is this to destroy, you know, uh, the food market? put us in an artificial food shortage like what what is this is is this just a coincidence and because we're already on edge like we're we're, we're paying a lot closer attention to it you know like when when you when you buy your new car you all of a sudden see that car all the time now even even though you're not really thinking about it right it's not like you're thinking about you know oh yeah i i drive x car while you're driving the car like you're just you're just driving to whatever destination you're like oh there's my car. Oh, there it is again. You know, kind of situation. Like, is it one of those types of situations where because we're uh, heightened, you know, like, we're in disarray a little bit. Um, we're, we're, we're paying attention to this stuff. I, I, I don't know. I don't know, guys. I don't know. Um, but obviously, I will be 
I will be paying attention to what's going on around us for sure. Um, but y'all let me know how y'all feel about it in the comment section. What do you think is going on? Or do you think nothing is going on? Do you think this is just a coincidence, like I said, because we're in this state of mind that we're, you know, we pay more attention to it now? Let me know. Like, share, comment. Hit that subscribe button before you go. Peace and love. I'm out.